Good morning. Do you remember last Sabbath what Sister Kennedy um, encouraged us to do? More, more water and eliminate the sugar. Yes. And no, we had a really, we got a, a lot of information on uh, sodas and how we don't want to have anything to do with those. She asked me to continue um, with our water subject, but this time it's going to be water on the outside rather than on the inside. When you think of hydrotherapy, what do you think of? You think of a big uh, stainless steel tank with a whirlpool in it for your back pain or your uh, other woes that you might have? Do you think about a, a therapy pool, maybe at the Y, where they take people with, uh, uh, where they can, uh, I know, uh, you know, you know about that, don't you? That's right. Well, we think, we think of, of physical therapy, occupational therapy, as um, hydrotherapy. But for us, as God's remnant church, it is so much more than that. And um, in fact, it's a very, very small part of what hydrotherapy entails. You remember from science class the three forms of water? We have liquid, which we drink, which we shower with. We have a solid, which is ice, and we have gas or water vapor. And all of these have a very important part in hydrotherapy. Hydrotherapy is used by the therapist, like I mentioned before, but it's also part of alternative medicine or for us, um, lifestyle medicine, the things that God has given us, the simple remedies that can bring healing. Um, hydrotherapy, hydrotherapy works, works through, through the nervous, nervous system, system and, and acts on brain centers, brain centers through the reflexes that God has put inside our bodies. For instance, I can, I can um, put my feet in a basin of hot water to relieve a headache to relieve congestion. God has made us in such a way that if we know the simple ways um, to promote health and to recover health, we can, it doesn't even cost money. We don't have to have a prescription for what God has given us. And we'll find out later that, that it's not just to save money because it's a lot more work to do hydro, hydrotherapy for a headache than to just take a Tylenol. And that's what's going on right now. Many, many people never think about doing anything um, for themselves to assist the body in healing. They, they pop a pill. Function of the body. It can be st stimulated or reduced by means of temperature changes and length of application um, we have, uh, we, can, we can really increase the effect of hydrotherapy if we use friction. Have you ever taken a hot and cold shower and then rubbed down really, really good with a rough towel? That is such an amazing uh, treatment that we can give to ourselves every day. Advantages of hydrotherapy over medications. Hydrotherapy is not toxic. Not going to hurt you. They won't, you won't have a buildup. You won't have to deal with any, any adverse effects of hydrotherapy. And it's selective in its, in its application, in its action. Um, when you take a medication, what happens? Your whole body is medicated, isn't it? It's a systemic thing when you take a medication. But when we do hydrotherapy, we can go right to the problem area. Also, um, hydrotherapy will never burden your liver, which has to break down, has to destroy the, the remnants of medication, and then it um, has to be dealt with by the kidneys to eliminate them. So there's no burden on these organs through um, hydrotherapy. Now, hydrotherapy Water treatment is a prescription for all species. 
You ever love to watch a bird in a bird bath? They just absolutely love it. And God has made all creatures to um, enjoy the effects of water in all ages of humans. How many mothers here have, how many times do our little ones run a fever? For no obvious reason, we don't know why it's happening. And um, what do most mothers do when they check their child's temperature and it's 101? What do they do? You run to the medicine cabinet and get the Tylenol liquid to get that miserable fever down when it was God himself who put that, who put that signal in to tell mama that the body is fighting the, the virus, the infection of some sort. You know, it takes 101 degrees for the body to be able to, to kill a virus. It takes 101 degrees. So we need to cooperate with, with our bodies in the way that God has created us. Forget the Tylenol. Keep a close check, check on, on the, the temperature. temperature. Get, Get plenty, plenty of, of liquids. liquids. Rest. Rest. Um, and a, a bath. bath. My, when, my, when my children were little, I would hear my, the bathtub running. There'd be water running into it, and I'd go in there, and, and my oldest boy, he just knew when he was like five years old to go turn on the tub and get in there if he didn't feel well, no matter what it was. If he had a tummy ache, he just had a, a, something going on with his throat, he just knew to get in the bathtub. One of the easiest and most effective ways to do hydrotherapy is just with, a, with your feet in the tub. Um, especially um, hot water followed by cold water or ice water. It's a very effective um, remedy, and it just takes a basin, like a, like a dish pan or something like that. For instance, for the common cold or flu, um, for pneumonia, a very effective treatment is a hot foot bath for 20 minutes, um, and then a cold water pour afterward. I like to put some ice in the water. And, and you know, if your feet are in a tub for 20 minutes, that water's gonna cool off, so you can carefully um, add hot water to keep it where it's uh, bearably hot. You don't want to burn anyone. And we'll talk about some, some situations where you would not want to put anyone's feet in the, in the hot water. But most healthy people, all healthy people, can put their feet in hot water and keep it, keep it hot for 20 minutes and then follow with ice water afterward. And it is so wonderful. And then a good friction rub with a rough towel after that is so comforting. And 30 minutes, somebody's been doing that. And then 30 minutes of rest, any treatment that we do, we should rest for 30 to 60 minutes afterward to let that treatment have a good effect. Another thing we can do for, for upper respiratory infections is sit in a hot tub of water for 10 to 20 minutes until you start sweating like crazy. And once you start sweating, dry off really quick, jump in bed with a hot water bottle, and get the covers up to here and keep that heat in. And after one hour, do a quick uh, scrub with alcohol or cold water. It will help your immune system very, very much and give you a sense of well-being. Another thing is we get a sinus problem or a congested head. Um, we can do alternating cold, hot, uh, wet towels. I like to stand at the sink, fill one side with hot water, the other with, with icy water, and just either wring out a towel out of the hot and leave it on there and keep getting it hot. And then every uh, three minutes, three minutes hot, 20 to 30 seconds cold, and your nose will begin to run, and you'll feel things breaking up in your head, and it's such a simple a simple thing to do right there at the sink. For coughs or sore throats, contrast packs to, ch to your chest. You know, just some bath towels, 
uh, run out of hot water, two minutes hot, 20 seconds with a cold one right after that. And it's so refreshing. And uh, after that, to use cold mitten friction, you just put a mitten on of some sort or wrap a rough washcloth over and just give it a good friction rub over the chest. My husband's favorite treatment for um, sore throat, if he feels a scratchy throat coming on, or he's got um, maybe a cough that he wants to deal with, we just put a, um, like a thin piece of, of cloth, maybe a thin flannel or a, an old worn out sock that's really thin. Put that in cold water, wring it out, put it around, wrap it around the neck, and then after that, put a piece of wool over it to completely cover it with wool or other, other knit, knitted type fabric. And then an old bread bag will do or some, or some plastic wrap. Wrap that around finely and pin it securely and go to bed with your covers up to here. Every time it takes away the sore throat, you don't even get a sore throat that you think is coming on. And the second one, is for the chest. We have old white t-shirts that we wring out of cold water, I mean ice cold water. Wring it out and put it on. It doesn't feel very good to put an icy cold wet t-shirt on, but right over that you put a sweater or um, a heavy uh, sweatshirt and go to bed, get covered up, and that's called a heating compress. And your body will heat that compress up and wonderful things will happen to in, improve your breathing, to lessen congestion in your chest. And it feels good. It only is really cold for about two minutes and then it's over. So don't, don't be afraid. This is a very important treatment. We, we probably all, we, we do probably half of it every day. We shower. But if we could remember that a hot shower weakens a person. Um, if you sit in a hot tub or you're lying in a hot bathtub, um, that hot water tends to weaken the body. But if you follow that hot bath or hot shower with a cold shower, you will get increased, increased um, um, white blood count, You'll get a sense of well-being, and you'll learn to sing opera when you didn't know you could. <laughs> it is, uh, I remember the first time I did it, my husband came running. What's wrong? Nothing. <laughs> it was so wonderful. And I've been doing that for 30 years, and a, a shower is not a shower without a cold, cold splash after. And if you feel like you're running um, into, you know, you're, you're um, maybe having some scratchy throat or you're just feeling tired, it would be good to go back and forth maybe three times. Three minutes hot, 20 seconds cold, back and forth three times. Finish with cold always because that's the, that's the kick you need. So a contrast shower will increase your white blood cell production, stimulate blood and lymphatic circulation, help to regulate body temperature. You know, a lot of us, especially in the winter, we're so, we're so um, in the house enjoying the heat that pretty soon we can get pretty feeble and pretty um, just, we're, we're just not getting out like we should and getting exercise. And we'll tend to, when we sit too much, the extremities get cold. And if you want to turn up the heat because you're cold all the time, well, this um, contrast shower every day will help to regulate that body temperature where you get that circulation moving a whole lot better. It promotes uh, feelings of well-being. For head and uh, chest congestion, um, Take a long contrast shower, but don't turn on your exhaust fan in the bathroom. Let it get good and steamy in there. 
so that when you do your four or five rotations of the hot and cold, which is so wonderful, after the first time, that cold feels so good because you're so hot, it feels wonderful. So when you finish those, just stay there in the bathroom and just breathe in that wonderful steam for 20 to 30 minutes. The dry, heated air in the summer causes a lot of our throat difficulties and sinus difficulties. People get bloody noses in the winter because that heated air is so dry. And so we really need to increase the humidity. Um, if we have a, a humidifier in the home in the winter, it'd be great. If not, just put a kettle of water on to boil and let it, and, and just stay by it and make sure you get your mucous membranes all lubricated. All right, ice is another wonderful uh, form of hydrotherapy. We use that for inflammatory situations like a, a new injury, a joint injury. It feels so, so comforting. You use ice when you want to, to um, deal with inflammation. And some people like ice and some heat. But when you have a, remember, when you have a new injury, you always want to start with ice for the first uh, 24 to 48 hours. For treatment of pain, you can either do heat hot pack for 20 minutes or an ice pack for 15 to 20 minutes every two hours. It's amazing how that will help to um, relieve pain. Dixie cups are wonderful for localized pain, like on a back, a shoulder, a hip, whatever. Um, just put a couple of Dixie cups, those little paper ones. You don't want to use a plastic one. It will hurt. So the little paper Dixie cups, fill them half full, put them in the freezer, get them nice and solid, and then you can cut the bottom, cut the bottoms out of them, and use them over and over, the same ones, and you do a figure eight motion over the spot that hurts. Keep moving like this, figure eight. And that is an amazing pain reliever for localized pain. For headaches, a hot foot bath with a cold compress on the head for 20 minutes. Feet in the hot, and it's that reflexive action uh, you can put an ice pack, or you can um, put a cold towel on the, on the head. You can also do an alternating hot foot bath. Three minutes hot, 30 seconds cold, with a cold hump compress on the head. Cautions in the use of heat. This is, um, uh, most of us are, are healthy, but if you have pulmonary tuberculosis, you got TB, TB can be in the bone, it can be in a lot of places, but if your lungs are tuberculous, you should not apply heat to the chest. Also to extremities in diabetic patients or people with known hardening of the arteries, you can, you, you can soak, they can soak their feet in warm water, but you really need to not have hot water like healthy people can handle. Uh, to the chest of a heart attack patient. Um, if you've had a heart attack, don't do these things to your chest. Don't put hot pack on them. Or to, of course, to an unconscious or paralyzed person. Hydrotherapy is so wonderful. It is, um, it's known all through God's creation that God was wonderful to give us flowing water, pure water, you know, in the 1918 Spanish flu, which is really applicable to know what they did today, what they did back then, um, millions and millions of people died all over the world. And there was one place where they weren't dying, and that was in our Adventist sanitariums, where hydrotherapy was the treatment of choice. And God has given us he has given us that knowledge. He gave us, he honored us by giving us simple measures that we could do to, uh, to save life. And we, we don't need to reinvent the wheel because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
So we need to learn. We need to be medical missionaries. It, today, they're every single member of this, this blessed church. Every single member should be a medical missionary. And medical missionaries in the 21st century ha have two characteristics. They're people of high concept. High concept and high touch. To have high concept means to be able to, to describe or convey an idea to someone who has never seen the beauty of truth. Do you know people like that? Amen. We all do, don't we? We know people who do not understand, they don't see the beauty of the truth as it is in Christ. You might as well say George is coming as to tell them that Christ is coming because they don't know him. They don't know the beauty of truth. And so we need a high concept. We need to learn how to present the truth in such a way that it's irresistible. That's what we need. The world needs that. And we learn that as medical missionaries. The second concept is high touch. High touch is the capacity to show interest in people, to empathize with them, and to get one's hands dirty in endeavoring to meet their needs. And who, did, who had this, who had these concepts? Jesus did. Jesus was the epitome of high concept and high touch. He came and he desired with all his heart to convey the love of God to people that had no idea what truth was. And I think about, and then, did he get his hands dirty in serving? Oh, yes. Did he empathize? Did he love people? He showed interest in the, in the most unpromising people his, his disciples were all unpromising, but he is our example as medical missionaries. Remember, there were 12 men in that upper room, and Jesus took a basin and a towel, and he washed 12 pairs of dirty feet. And that night, when he did that, he healed 11 hearts. 11 out of 12 hearts were healed. They were selfish. They were seeking the highest place. And yet they needed, how did he choose to heal their hearts? With a basin and a towel. Glory to God. He's simple, simple things that we can do. And so I, I, I just encourage everybody if you would like to learn more about um, natural remedies, hydrotherapy and all, um, look up Agatha Thrash online. She's sort of like the, the, she passed away a few years ago, but she was the queen of hydrotherapy, charcoal treatment, all wonderful, simple remedies. And we're hoping to have classes here as soon as it's a, a little more conducive to having groups come together, but we need to train. We need to be ready. God has given us all the equipment, and it's simple equipment. But may the Lord bless us as we, as we seek to be like our Savior with high concept and high touch. This world is longing for a touch of love. Anyway, God bless you all. Bless us all. <laughs>